Hello and welcome to another edition of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem, a show where we answer your most pressing questions about the most recent episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved, which was Eastern State Penitentiary. All the questions we're answering today came from you guys via our BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page and our BuzzFeed Unsolved Insta Instagram page. What? Okay. Follow the link. Go to that link. The one you were shooting your little finger guns at. at. Good to be back. <laughs> Oh yeah, you're back. Good to be back. I completely forgot you were gone. I, nice. I've realized I loved Quinta on the episode, but she really just she let you get a little too. Uh, she wasn't there to stop you. You know, you got your feathers all puffed up. I don't know what you're you, talking about. Shaniacs, you better watch out, cause we're coming for you. We did. Was you? We did, and we, we we I said we were going to come, and we did. We right. came out in droves. Let's get to some questions, Ryan. Okay, how about that? Also, stick around for the end of the show because we are going to address some of the uh, more shocking revelations from the JFK files. This is a juicy app. If you haven't checked out the BuzzFeed Unsolved page on our on BuzzFeed.com, it's right here. It has research notes that go into the episode. So that you can uh, really pour through the literature and yeah. dig up all those little details we don't get to in the show. Yeah. All right, <coughs> all right. Questions. Uh, question times. You want to go first? Yeah. Here's from Instagram. It's from Cyan Michaels 2K17. Hi guys. Quick question. Because of the penitentiary's extremely dark history, do you think there could possibly be a demon infestation there? Ryan, not saying I believe in supernatural stuff because I don't, but it would hypothetically make sense. Love you guys. You being a shaniac, you go into this haunted location. Haunted location, according, you know, uh, playing the part. Does that thought even enter your mind? I wonder if there's a demon here. Um, it doesn't enter my mind, but I could understand wanting to understand what your stupid brain thinks. Uh, All right, uh, what's the question again? <laughs> uh, do you think there could be demons there? No. Okay, next question for Ryan. Oh yeah, this one comes from Danielle Steinwart. Ryan, I just want to know why you're so scared of ghosts. Oh boy, okay, I'm starting to see why Shane picked this one. Because from your own personal experience in these episodes, it seems the scariest things they do are turn on lights, mutter incoherently, and knock over little tubes of toothpaste. I'm just saying, with that logic, are you also scared of, like, clumsy grandmas? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> Did you? Did you? Yeah. Are you afraid of clumsy grandmas? Uh, oh wait, I, I missed the end though. Hashtag still love you though. Uh, hashtag, but maybe stay away from nursing homes. That's good. Little old ladies. That's good, yeah. Uh, you know what? If that little old lady was a ghost, then yes, I would be scared of her. Uh, here's one from Becky Ingram. I think it would be easier to believe your EVPs or sound recordings if you didn't tell us what you thought they said straight away. If we all heard the same thing without you suggesting it beforehand, it could then count as evidence. Hashtag Geniac. I actually had thought about that. I think it would be interesting to go around the office and play the clips for people and say, what do you think this says? Because it's such a stretch. It's such a stretch, Ryan. It's not. I mean, you have zero integrity at this point. What are you talking about? One of them, okay, not this episode, but the first episode of the season, Vulture Mine, yeah. I did play you the clip without telling you what yeah, it we was. Yeah, we have a... What? What? I, I guess I could hear a what? And he said what? Yeah. What, what else he got? Brown and white is pretty... Ah, ooh, ah. No, no, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. No, I heard brown it say and white, ah, ooh, ah. Brown and white is damn clear. What color are the jackets we're wearing? Um, uh, and I think if we played that for a lot of people, they would agree. I don't think so. I don't know. We're not going to agree on that. I think, we are uh, not. I think maybe you should just take the shit out of your ears. How about that? Yeah, you can Q-tip the shit out. Okay, and then you're going to eat it. Mm. This comes from Da Da Spoopy Lucio. It's Da Spoopy Lucio. Uh, this one it just says, "LOL, Ryan's saw impression was great." It is good. It's pretty good. Do it again. What the? Uh, what, yeah, do it for the folks. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, check me out in Jigsaw. It's my uh, twelfth picture, and I was really happy with this one. <laughs> Wait, he's <laughs> he's talking up his new Saw film. Yeah, this is Jigsaw. Just doing some some press for my new movie. It's really good, as always. Great. Here's from Instagram from Instagram from Libby Paulson. Don't ghosts usually haunt the place they die in? Since Al Capone only stayed there for nine months and didn't die there, it doesn't make sense for his ghost to be in his cell. So hypothetically, if it wasn't Al Capone's ghost, then who do you think it was? He died in Florida, right? Yeah, but I think I've said this to you before, and you say my ghost. Uh, this rules is you making change. another ghost rule. My my belief, and this is also uh, like a Japanese mythology supernatural belief, ghosts 
will then, ghosts were more likely to haunt the place where they were in the most misery, where they, you know, experienced a strong feelings of hate or anger. And so not, not when, when he was dying in Florida, no, but, but rather when he was in his cushy little cell with a nice Victrola and a... Yeah, okay, you make it sound like Florida is this awful place. Florida has Disney World. I know there's parts of Florida that aren't that great. Well, I know I probably wouldn't enjoy Disney World if I had syphilis. Yeah, but he was probably in a nice little bed getting a, a you know... He had syphilis. He, had a, he probably had a lot of people t attending to him. And, I don't know, uh, man. Syphilis isn't... It's not a good time. You know, it's also not a good time. It's not jail. Like syphilis. Five jail stars. Is not a jail. Oh, yeah. Jail is five stars, too. I love jail. I'd rather be in jail without syphilis than just dying in Florida. Let's move on to uh, Polina.Vera. Can someone explain to me the science behind the spirit box? Like, who just decided that ghosts can speak at this frequency? See... Oh, boy. Okay, is this where Shane's gonna... Uh, see? Yeah, you know, I've had a lot of people who are tweeting at me like, I can't believe you admitted that those EVPs sounded like voices. You have to understand, me saying, sure, that sounds like someone saying what, uh, has no bearing on my belief in ghosts. Because the spirit box is bullshit, right? It is. Basically, I'll go into the science first before Let's we hear the science. Up. So the science of the, and I explained this in the episode, uh -huh. but basically a spirit box is a, is a, a radio tuner that is scanning different radio channels. And by scanning, I mean, it's a, uh, when you're in your car and you, you click next, the next radio channel, that's like you're scanning to a new channel every time. Yeah. Um, basically what this spirit box is doing is it's going to a new channel every 15 hundredths of a second. Can you say my name, Al? So that means every 15 hundredths of a second, a new channel's on, a new channel's on, and it's skipping that. So over the course of one second, well, what's the math there? 30, 60, 90, 90, 60, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90. <laughs> it's about seven channels. It's about, about seven, seven channels per second. Did you say shut up? <laughs> All right. So for the in the instance of, uh, uh, of brown and white, that was about two to three seconds for that phrase. That's right. That means that about 21 different channels worked together to form a sound that was the same voice well, and, I, a, and a sentence. You know that a lot of radio stations have multiple bands, right? So you think 21 different channels- No, I think N the radio picked up radio frequencies. You think it picked up 21 channels in a row of NPR? Sure, I think you'll hear what you want to hear. Oh my God. Here's one from 26 Kiki. I'm not sure if anyone's mentioned this, but when Ryan and Shane went into the cell con containing the tunnel that was being built by the prisoners and the whistle was heard, could this possibly be the whistle of a person warning the others to stop digging? Well, first off, we should review that whistle because that whistle was a big moment. Let's review that whistle. I mean, we don't, we don't need to hear you. Oh, no yeah, time. roll the clip. I actually, I didn't mean to, to drag anyone else into this, but we have a a guy who works on the show with us, Tej Monster. Oh my God. And I, I said, I know Ryan's gonna try and peddle some some lies this week. There is no lies, TJ. Yeah. And okay, I, here's, a, here's a quote from him on the matter. Oh my God. He said, quote, Ryan did ask me to listen to some of the audio a while back. It was the whistle part in the cell with the escape tunnel. He wanted to know if it was me who whistled. At that time, I did suggest that it was probably the maintenance worker. The whistle sound came through all the microphones recording on set, and I do remember hearing that sound on location. And also remember thinking nothing of it, because that cell was located right by a door to the outside, where moments before, we all saw the maintenance worker. If I recall correctly, Ryan was frightened by the maintenance worker when he first saw him. Ryan refused to accept or even contemplate my suggestions, because it did not fit into his narrative. These were clearly not the answers Ryan was looking for because he seemed irritated and distraught by our reactions. That is such a load of shit. That is such a load of shit. <laughs> TJ didn't even know the maintenance worker was there. I don't know, man. I can't believe that TJ That's just TJ weighing in. That's the TJ monster there. That is complete horseshit. There's a ghost whistling to his friend to say, hey, they're digging over here, let's stop. I, I mean, to me, it seems like a signal. If they're digging, they had to have some kind of signal like, hey, guards are coming. They have to have a lookout of some sort. Okay, it's a whistling ghost. This is from Asio Lati. Uh, oh, Harry Potter reference, I think. Raccio? Like Asio. Like. Is it Asio or Accio? Asio. Oh, I saw Accio. I only read five books, though. Oh, okay. Anyways, whatever. 
Uh, I'm a hashtag Shaniac through and through, and I love the show so much. Just wondering why Shane seemed so off during this episode. Was it really the spoopy prison ghosts? Or was it just that it, or was it just that it was a genuinely creepy environment that made him uneasy, even without ghosties zooming about? Um, <laughs> I think I know why you were off. Why don't you tell them why you were off? Yeah, they're, so, <clears throat> I didn't really want to get into this, but I ate some bad hot dogs. Plural. Ironic. Plural. Ironic that hot Plural. dogs would do that for Yeah, them. yeah. Uh, we all went to the airport. We were in a rush to get to the location. There was airport hot dogs, a cart. And I thought, okay, maybe I'll have one of these just for testing. baggage claim. Shane we walks bought, out. We bought hot dogs in baggage claim. He bought two hot dogs. Shane walked out with well, two Well, I being the nice guy, hot dogs. I let everyone else buy their hot dogs before me. So by the time I got to the hot dogs, there were only two spicy hot dogs left. And so you, you had, had to buy spicy You had to dogs. have both of them. I had to have the, bice, yeah. the spicy hot dogs. This guy was struggling most of All the night I was sweating. I'm actually surprised I don't look worse in that episode. It was fun to imagine people who have been in there in the past. <laughs> after, the, after the shoot was done, Shane just turned to me and with the palest, sweatiest face just went, I'll meet you guys at the hotel. I need a poop. And he ran across the street into a bar. I didn't see him until an hour later. I walked in and the bartender looked over at me and I said, can I use your bathroom? And the guy <laughs> said, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Like he looked concerned. Yeah, so you're right. You picked up on Shane almost shitting his pants. This is, uh, this is ill-advised. <laughs> this next question comes from Glenn Leonard, 5515. It just says, we're fucked. Hashtag Shaniac. You know what, Glenn? You're right. I gotta tell you, Glenn, you're not right because there's nothing about this location that was spookier than the rest. Uh, you're right, he's right, yeah. He I, needs see, a, I knew you were gonna cast the, this the, doubt the, the, upon the things the big, I say. The big guy needs a win. What else we got? We got some JFK stuff? Yeah, all right, here we go. So, starting with fact number one. Or not fact, revelation number one. <laughs> okay. In response to the assassination, some in the Soviet Union, in an obtained memo, thought the murder was a coup by the ultra-right in an attempt to blame the Soviets for the killing. Uh, Kennedy was known to be, uh, you know, he wanted to keep the peace with the Russians. That, that was like a known fact. Ah. So to frame this murder on the Russians, the ultra-right would have what they wanted, which was us to, you know, attack Russia. Sure. That makes sense. Motivations. But the juicy part of this is an informant told the Americans that, quote, President Johnson was responsible for the assassination, end quote. Once again, no real proof here. Yeah, just, these are just little, little tidbits, huh? Yeah, this is a, a, a lot of he say, she say. He say, she say. What? Yes. <laughs> he say, she say. He say, she say. <laughs> Former CIA director Richard Helms in a newly released deposition from 1975 was asked, quote, is there any information involved with the assassination of President Kennedy, which in any way shows that Lee Harvey Oswald was in some way a CIA agent or an agent, and then it gets cut off. That document itself gets cut off right there. Uh, um, he, was, he was asked that, and we don't see the answer. Interesting. Obviously, there's a lot more to uncover here if they didn't release yeah. pages. Right? I will say that the fact that they didn't release almost 90% of the documents, and one of the documents has a cutoff quote, doesn't look good. I'll say that. Yeah, everyone thought we were getting like the, the rest of the jigsaw puzzle today, but we really just got one little piece. <laughs> yeah, we got one like, piece. Here you go. It looks like uh, there's grass in this yeah. picture. Yeah. FBI Ooh. Director J. Edgar Hoover's dictated memo November 24th, 1963 states, quote, the thing I am concerned about, and so is Mr. Katzenbach, that's who was the Deputy Attorney General, mm -hmm. is having something issued so we can convince the public that Oswald is the real assassin, end quote. Oh, that's pretty juice. That's a, that's a nugget. It's a nugget. But once again, you could spin that either way. Either he's desperate oh. to prove that this is true so that people well, don't do shit like we're doing right now right. because it is in fact true. Or it's like, well, we gotta make these dummies believe the truth. Yeah, or it's we gotta make them believe. There's, yeah. a, there's a difference. Yeah. Uh, once again, we don't know. An editor of a publication investigating the JFK assassination claims that he had proof that Lyndon B. Johnson was a member of the Ku Klux Klan. Uh, also interesting was he cites proof, but doesn't show the proof. I feel like a lot of successful white men back then were probably, were pr probably dabbled. Right. Perhaps. But once again, unsubstantiated claim. Yeah, I'm, 
But, I mean, if this is in fact true, uh, this isn't looking very good for LBJ. Well, a lot of things don't look good for LBJ. Yeah, but I mean... This... He did some good things, did some bad things. Uh, Moving on to the next revelation. Uh, a man overheard someone place a bet that JFK would be, quote, dead within three weeks in a New Orleans bar. Whoa. What if that person just wrote cocky, though? We were in New Orleans. We heard what... <laughs> yeah. We know what people are like. Because you know me, you get that liquor me, I start saying that fucking... Uh, I start naming assassinations one by one. I'm going to start doing that now. That's going to look really bad. I'll, be, I'll just be out on a, Friday a fr on a Friday night, and I'll be like, Mario Lopez. <laughs> Two weeks. Extra is going to be very, very sad in one day. Mark my words, Mario. No, 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 no love lost to Mario Lopez. I like Mario Lopez. Yeah, he's got he's got good dimples, right? Next revelation. In a deposition, Richard Magara Helms, a top CIA official during the Kennedy assassination, said, quote, President Johnson used to go around saying that the reason President Kennedy was assassinated was that he had assassinated President Diem, and this was just justice. He certainly used to say that in the early days of the presidency, and where he got this idea from, I don't know. I just picture that guy walking around, kind of grabbing his nuts, being like, I'll tell you what this was. You know why he got shot in the head? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Oh, thank you for the sweet tea, honey. Thank you for the sweet tea, honey. Uh, I'll tell you without Kennedy. I could totally see him walking around with his hands in his boxers. Yeah. Uh, a little straw of hay sticking out of his mouth. Yeah. Straw hat. Just grunting. He seems, he seems like one of those guys, if you stood next to him at the urinal, who would be like... <sighs> you ever get one of those next to you? Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you doing over there? He's what are you, Tom Hanks in the Green Mile? <laughs> He's exercising a demon. <laughs> Peeing out fairies? Yeah. Maybe he had two airport hot dogs. Maybe that's what it was. Uh, what do we have coming up this week, Ryan? Oh. You know what? I normally don't like giving it away, but I'm just going to say it. This is the one sacrifice I have for this season. And if you're familiar with the series, you know what that means. <gasps> that does it for this episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem. Make sure you watch the episode coming this Friday. Send in your questions to BuzzFeed Unsolved, the Facebook page and the Instagram page, and we will get to them. Don't you do yeah. do don't, don't you fucking- Ryan, I have a quick thing to say here. Uh, now that this is up, you know, people love when we bring in little animations. And uh, I, I recall last season we were doing a fun, we had a, like a fun, I can't remember, it was something with hot dogs or something. Uh, so I thought I'd bring that back. Just bring back our beloved characters that we all loved so much. You wanted them and based on your feedback, you said, no, more hot dogs. So I did not say that. <coughs> you it's did. It's just another lie being said, peddled no, by Mr. Mateo. more hot dogs. Honestly, it's, uh, they're just bouncing all up. All right, and we're back. I think we last left off on the island where the joust had happened with Dan. His wife, Rebecca, you their said, son. You, you said you weren't going to do this anymore. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Their son, who traveled back in time from the future, Brandon, and their friend and acclaimed character, Jean, who is French fries. Oh, Dan and sweet Brandon, we're a family again. A real family with a tasty side of Jean. Oh, that's my name. Don't wear it out. Love that Jean. Oh, were you looking for reaction? Yeah. I, I was actually, I tuned out to be honest. Now Dan the hot dog in response to that says, holy shit, Gene, look everyone, Rebecca's evil sister Pam is dead, I think. Those crabs left her on a log for a beast to consume. It's time for us to put this whole crazy saga behind us and remember what it means to be a family. Brandon says, Three cheers for my hot dad. That means it's like a hot dog version of a dad. You just say hot dad, like hot mom. Oh, I got it. Yeah, you know, no explanation needed. Hup, hup, hup. A letter falls from the sky. With a hup, no one says hup. Hey, 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 I got a letter. Read it, Jean. Boo, it's from my sister, Jebra. She's getting married in California and she wants me to get my old band back together and play for her wedding. Band? Well, it's a long story, y'all, but I think I'll have time to tell it because we're gonna get that band back together and we're gonna play that wedding. This calls for a road trip. Hot dog a two, buns on the run. You got just some cool. There's nothing cool about this there. story, so just say music. I did you? I, it's like I can feel people. Oh, was that the end? Yeah, that's we're we're in okay. it now. Yeah. 
He's got to get his band back together. Oh, he's got to get his band together. You know, he's it's pretty gotta, good. He's got to do what he's got to do. All right. A great. road trip. Oh man, a road trip sounds great. That was fun. Yeah, it was. Uh, that was the worst. Send in all your Jean yeah. fan art. You keep it in a little baby shoe box. You got like two little letters. A thousand baby shoe boxes. One, one addressed from yourself. Unbelievable. Dear future Shane, keep doing the hot dog story. Everyone loves it. Everyone, everyone loves it. Quote Ryan Bergara. Everyone loves it. Everyone loves it. Everyone loves it. Everyone loves it. Woo! Hey Ryan, I like your shirt. Thanks, I like yours too. Thanks, buy it here.